Hello again. Well, today we're going to start an entirely new set of lectures, and this is going to be on information theory. So what's the basic idea? Well, uh, almost anything you do in computing is about information. Information flowing in the network or, you know, information flowing counter to the policy, as we've said in several cases. So what's going on? We'd like to be able to figure out exactly what information is in these contexts and be able to quantify how much information is flowing across a particular channel. So the basic paradigm is very simple. In fact, it's almost trivial. We have a sender, a receiver, and a channel of some kind between them to allow the flow of information. And what we would like to be able to do is, is attach numbers to those things. How much information can we pass over the channel? How much information is there in a particular message? That sort of thing. Okay, so these are the kind of questions that we might want to ask. Again, how much information is encoded in a particular message? How efficiently can a particular message or set of messages, language, be transmitted um, for a, a given transmission medium, a channel? What is the uh, maximum capacity of that channel? And then, uh, if there's interference or noise within the environment, how does that affect the transmission of information? Now, uh, information theory has very precise answers to these questions. It's a very deep mathematical subject, and we're not going to talk about most of the power of information theory in here. We're just going to say a little bit, uh, enough to scratch the surface and introduce the topic. Okay, why do we care about information theory? Well, once again, we would like to be able to quantify the amount of information flowing through a channel. For example, when we talked about covert channels, we said that one of the important characteristics of a covert channel is the bandwidth. How much information can be pushed across the channel in a particular uh, amount of time? Example, bits per second. And um, so it would be nice to be able to, to, to quantify that, um, that information. Okay, so let's uh, do a thought experiment um, and, and figure out if we can ever do this, right? So imagine that you have a sender and a receiver, and the receiver has asked the sender a question and is expecting a yes or no answer. And so the sender is going to respond with a yes or no. Well, how might that happen? Well, the sender might send a, a, a string of characters, for example, Y-E-S or N-O, but presumably there's a more efficient way to answer a question if you're worried about the bandwidth of the channel, right? So what are we really talking about here? Well, we, we, we probably imagine the following scenario. The sender knows an answer, either yes or no. The receiver believes that the sender has an answer, yes or no, but doesn't know which, which one. And the sender wants to transmit as efficiently as possible that piece of information to, to completely uh, resolve the uncertainty in the receiver. And the, and the question then we want to ask is, how efficiently or how parsimoniously can the sender send that information to the receiver? Well, it's pretty clear in this case that all the sender needs to do is send one bit of information, either a, a, a zero or a one, representing either a yes or no. But uh, even though that's sort of the obvious answer, that, that in, one, in one sense begs the question because the receiver has to know how to interpret that. For example, if they haven't agreed in advance whether a zero represents yes or no, then the receiver is still going to be in the dark. Okay, so what does this example suggest? Well, it suggests that in some cases, it is possible for us to quantify the amount of information in a particular message. If, if, the, if the message is either yes or no, then that really is one bit of information, and that's pretty clear. Uh, it also suggests that perhaps an appropriate measure of information of a message is bits, and, and that's going to be the metric or the measure that we're going to be using as we go through this. And finally, the sender and the receiver have to have some shared knowledge. At, at bare minimum, they have to have agreed on an encoding scheme beforehand, otherwise no communication is going to occur. Okay, so what have we said? We said that information basically is just any content that a sender wants to convey to a receiver across some communication channel. 
We've said that information theory is an attempt to quantify the amount of information, and typically we're going to do that in terms of the amounts, uh, in, in terms of the bits of information in a message. And communication of any kind requires some uh, shared knowledge between the sender and the receiver. At minimum, it requires that they both understand the encoding scheme. Thank you.